Welcome to One Little Spice, the Disney food podcast that isn't afraid to send you into the taste lab. Welcome to episode 24. And the winner is Iron Chef Masahara Morimoto! We are talking about Morimoto's in Disney Springs now. Morimoto Asia in Disney Springs. I'm Julie. And I'm Amy. And I can't wait to dive into this one because this one was a very fun dinner. But first, yo, it's time for Amy's Daily Dish. Amy, what's your dish? Icky, icky, icky. Let's dish. Item one. Sprinkles Cupcakes in Disney Springs, Walt Disney World, and Downtown Disney in Disneyland are selling breast cancer awareness cupcakes featuring Lauren Brand's creation, Cuppy, the Good Advice Cupcake, for the month of October. I'm sorry, the who's he, what's it, huh? Cuppy. The Good Advice Cupcake. Okay. You've never seen Cuppy the Good Advice Cupcake? Googling him. Google him. 50 cents from every cupcake sold will go to the National Breast Cancer Foundation. The cupcake is featuring strawberry champagne frosting and a little sugar plaque of Cuppy the Good Advice Cupcake. Is it sugar or is it... I think white it's chocolate. sugar. It might be white chocolate. It's a little placard of either sugar or white chocolate. I've also seen they have ones with the breast cancer ribbon, but they were talking about oh, cuppy. Oh, I see them. Yeah. They're strawberry champagne cupcakes. Yes. I know you said that. But. Mm-hmm. And one says, feel your lumps, save your bumps. Yes. Sorry, feel for lumps, save your bumps. Yes. My mother, Helen, of the Helen Test, last year was diagnosed with breast cancer. She's fine. But, you know, take a minute, listen to the Good Advice Cupcake. (laughs) Feel your lumps, save your bumps. That's what the Good Advice Cupcake says. It is. Item two, new details for Galaxy's Edge, a.k.a. Star Wars Land. Oh my god, I'm so excited. Details have been released for the new Millennium Falcon ride coming next year. Information has been out for a little while that some guests on each ride will get to interact with the ride vehicle, and that would affect your ride experience as a whole. <gasps> I know. That's that, the coolest thing ever. That sounds pretty cool, doesn't it? We, we now have a bit more information on that. Six guests on each ride vehicle will get to help drive the Falcon. They will participate in piloting, weapons control, etc., that sort of thing. And how well you complete your mission will follow you and your RFID chips around the themed land. If you scratch up the ship and lose the cargo, you may find cast members letting you know to keep your head down as a bounty hunter is after you as you roll through the local cantina. If you deliver all your cargo and don't damage the ship, you may find a few extra quote-unquote galactic credits in your account. That all sounds pretty what? awesome. That sounds amazing. Oh my gosh, I cannot wait. I'm really curious to find out what those galactic credits actually are. Say that one more time. Galactic credits. <laughs> galactic. <laughs> I'm having a hard time. The same thing. I know. Credit. I'm curious what those galactic credits actually are and what they entail. I imagine. Yeah, they're yeah. probably not for anything. Well, the idea is you get them if you deliver the cargo and you don't scratch the ship and i have a feeling that you're always going to scratch you're 99 the percent of the time not, yeah. yeah that's going to happen and so it's not going to be a whole lot of people who are getting these credits so we will soon find out like next year <laughs> so i'm going to need 12 of these so we mentioned ooh, 12 of these again Let's yes go. So we mentioned on magical snack corner earlier but i cannot not share this all with you Caramel Kush in Epcot, Mm, Germany, is serving up two new types of caramel squares. They have a caramel macchiato square that is reportedly an intensely coffee-flavored caramel featuring delightful caramel swirl and a coffee bean on top. Coffee lovers, this one is for you. It sounds so amazing. Is it Mm. salted caramel? 
Um, I know they have a salted caramel already. Okay. Yeah. Next up, and the one I'm extremely excited for, a coconut caramel square. This caramel is full of coconut mixed throughout the caramel and is topped with some more toasted coconut shavings. So it also kind of sounds like a German chocolate cake-ish in a caramel square. Like that kind of seems Ger- like similarly to what they were trying to do. Yes, but a German chocolate cake isn't actually German. I understand that. I know. I'm just saying like that's kind well, of what it sounds like. German wasn't cho- it made in Dorchester? Yes. German chocolate cake was ma- invented in Dorchester. By a man or woman whose last name was German. I don't think that's what they're trying to do, though, because there's no. Oh, their last name was literally. Their last name was literally a German last name. No, it was literally German, and there's no chocolate in this. So. Oh my god! I can't wait for Christmas. I know. I will take. Is it gonna snow in Magic? I mean, in Hollywood Studios too. It might. I don't know. Flurry of fun. P.S. We're going on a Christmas trip to Disney. Also, item four. This has been mentioned on Magical Snack Corner, but oh. I'm going to Disney World <laughs> sooner than expected. And I get to go to the Ma- Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party. At least that's the plan. I basically told Amy that the only way she can go to Disney without me before our Disney trip is if she goes to Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party and tries all the things that I can't try. So if she doesn't do that, then we're not going to be friends anymore and I'll need a new podcast host. <laughs> I'm just kidding. My rogue news is that my Sanderson sisters Funko Pops finally came in and I'm so excited and I'm going to share a picture with you because I ordered them in July and they finally got delivered and they're amazing and the boxes are in perfect condition. They are. I saw them. They're amazing. And that wraps up Amy's Daily Dish. All right. So <clears throat> so that wraps up Amy's Daily Dish and now we will get into the meat and potatoes of this episode because I haven't said that in a long time. <laughs> All right, so we are talking about Morimoto Asia in Disney Disney Springs. Springs. So this is what Disney says about Chef Morimoto's, nope, about Morimoto Asia. Feast your eyes and senses on the newest flagship restaurant at Disney Springs, Morimoto Asia. Japanese master chef Masaharu Morimoto is acknowledged as one of the most inventive forces in Asian cuisine, and he has chosen the landing at Disney Springs as the venue for his very first pan-Asian restaurant. Morimoto Asia offers an entirely new dining experience for guests, including unique including unique exhibition kitchens that provide behind-the-scenes views in traditions into traditions like Peking duck carving and dim sum. The restaurant's massive two-story interior includes glittering 20-foot chandeliers, Shanghai-influenced lounges, private dining spaces, and a second-level sushi bar and lounge with a separate entrance. The scale and artistry of this signature dining location is a visual delight, but wait until you taste the food. All right, cuisine! So I pulled up the menu. So this restaurant is really incredible. It's two stories, so even when you're walking up to it, there's this giant i don't know if it has asian characters on it or just yes those are definitely very some sort monolithic. of monolithic yeah almost looks like hieroglyphics but well no asian but i meant style. it's a monolith yeah um but it's beautiful and especially at night it's just bright and wonderful and it's very regal yeah there are a lot of distinctly different buildings in Disney Springs, especially now since they've made it to Disney Springs from downtown Disney. You know, after adding fake springs, you can yes. do something, right? Yes. But Morimoto Asia really has always stood out. And even now, it still stands out. It's just very elegant and simplistic, but also there's a lot going on without too much going on. Yeah, it definitely feels like an Asian style architecture too. Yes, I feel like minimalist but still like striking. Yes. I'm trying to figure out how to describe this is I look at it and I feel like this restaurant could be an upscale restaurant in Japan. New York or California. Well, yeah, but I'm saying in you know, and would make sense as that in yes. Japan, not just here. Is any city likely to have this amount of architectural space to play with? Probably not, but 
I'd still I'd still buy it there. Absolutely. And then you walk inside oh, and right it. to the right there's this staircase that goes upstairs. You see these chandeliers and they really are just ginormous and they hang down and they're like circular sorry like cylindrical yeah they're beautiful they're just stunning and the restaurant is so open but not in a overwhelming sort of way yeah like the second floor is open to the first floor. Does that make sense? Like yeah, it's you like g- a balcony. Yeah, it's, it's like almost like a loft. It's, yeah, it's lofted. It's not just like a oh, and there's a staircase floor. that goes up and to like nowhere. You yeah. can't see it. No, you can you can look up there and they can look down at you. And so wherever you are in the restaurant, you are able to essentially enjoy the whole restaurant. If that makes any sense. I'm looking at the uh, concept art for it, and it looks nothing like. The actual place. That's the good. actual place looks so much better. Clearly, that was for the good thing. But there's some outdoor seating, and it's really pretty. And then to the left, as you're walking in, there's an open kitchen. And not completely open, but there are glass walls separating the dining room from the kitchen. So you can see what they're doing. And like it said in the description, to be able to witness them carving this peking duck and it is full glass wall from you know floor to ceiling, floor to ceiling so, so you can not literally see everything not just a wall with really big picture windows it's it's all window yep yeah, it's amazing it's magical and they're very clean not that you would expect them not to be but there are no fingerprints no yeah even at like them. what was it 10 30 11 at night there were no fingerprints so either no one touched it or they keep a close eye on it very true very true and we will talk more about this Fantastic, Soon. fantastical glass kitchen. A little bit later, because we got to sit right by it. Mm-hmm. Some great stories about it. We'll talk about the menu, and we'll go through it, and we will talk about... I feel like we'll talk about the dinner menu, and then if there's anything that's additional at lunch. Do you have lunch up now? I have lunch up okay. now. Okay. All right, so at lunch, they had a spicy tuna roll. Which was tuna, spicy mayo, scallions, and choice of white or brown rice, which is really cool that you can pick either or. There's a spicy yellowtail, which is Japanese yellowtail, jalapeno, scallions, and choice of rice. Spicy salmon is salmon, spicy mayo, and scallions. The California is blue crab meat, avocado, and cucumber, so real crab meat for Amy. Yep. And Julie. Well, of course for all of us, but Amy is a stickler about fake crab meat. I do. It's... (laughs) It's barely fish. It's true. So, eel like and avocado. the American cheese of fish. It is. Like sometimes you want it, but most of the time you want something better. Yes. Like sometimes it works, but most of the For time. For me, it never works, but. Well, I'm saying like American cheese. Sometimes you just want a grilled cheese sandwich with two mm-hmm. slices of American cheese. Sometimes that's what you want. Mm-hmm. They have eel and avocado roll with barbecue eel, avocado, and choice of rice. The shrimp tempura is asparagus, spicy mayo, and choice of white or brown rice. The vegetable roll is asparagus, carrots, avocado, spring mix, and cucumber. And the spider is tempura tempura soft shell crab, spicy mayo, and asparagus. It It is the same exact menu for dinner. I don't remember which platter we got. We got... The one for $90, right? Yes. Okay. So they have a Jo Sushi Combo, which is a daily selection of nine pieces of nigiri and one roll. The Jo Sashimi Combo, which is chef's daily selection of seven different fish, two pieces each. The one that we got, which we will show you a picture of because we got some really excellent pictures of this, and the fish was just so fresh and so beautiful even just to look at and so delicious it and was, oh, oh. <laughs> we both did it at the same time it was incredible and worth every penny so the tokujo sushi platter is chef's rare seasonal selection and multiple varieties from japan and it is 18 pieces of nigiri and two rolls and it is worth every penny oh my god it was amazing and then the 
tokuju sashimi platter, which is a rare selection and multiple varieties from Japan. And it's 10 different fish and three pieces each. Same for dinner. So ours, let me pull up a picture. So when you go to a Japanese restaurant or you go to a sushi restaurant, they have the different platters and combos and, you know, you, you spend the like 80 bucks on the love boat and it's half California roll. This is not that. This is hand, lovingly hand carved, hand chosen, hand placed, handcrafted. That was the word I was looking for instead of hand placed, handcrafted pieces of sushi and fish. They all go so well together. Nothing really overpowers another. It's just a beautiful platter. It really is. It's pretty to look at. It was super delicious. Um, so this was amazing. There was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Probably about eight different types of fish because it looks like two of them are tuna. Yes. Which I'm fine with because I love tuna. And then they added um, some egg, which is the a omelet, a Japanese omelet. Japanese. And I can't think of what it's called, but it's a Japanese omelet. And then there was the wasabi and ginger as always and it was served in this really fun like round it almost looks like an inner tube but it was blue and it was just the presentation was really incredible the two rolls that came with it were a what appears to be i believe a shrimp tempura well yeah it was a shrimp tempura but it was like a fancy shrimp tempura not just like throw some shrimp in there it was lovingly put together yeah, it looks like almost like a spicy shrimp tempura <coughs> And then the other one looks like a tuna, tuna roll with avocado. They're both amazing. And the fish oh, was yeah. so fresh that it probably wouldn't have mattered what they put in these rolls. It would have yeah. been insanely delicious no matter what. And granted, the Japanese omelet is definitely like an accompaniment. Well, technically, they do make sushi rolls with the Japanese omelet on it. But that was the best Japanese omelet I have ever tasted. Oh my god, it was so amazing. Japanese omelet, there's there's a little bit of sweet in it, there's a little bit of soy in it, and so they have this rectangular frying pan, essentially. Mm -hmm. And so they mix up the eggs, and then they pour them in, and then they let just the bottom layer barely cook, and then they start rolling it. And then they pour some more in, and then they roll that. Or then you know They take the existing roll and roll it back. And they keep rolling it until and adding more until it's this solid little block of delicious eggness. It's incredible to watch. Yes, it really is. Hopefully we can find a video to show you guys. If not, we'll just have to try it sometime. Mm -hmm. Oh, shucks. I have a book. I'm, I'm pretty sure I have a cookbook somewhere with illustrations. So at some point... Mm -hmm. I really want to get one of these towers. Yes, I agree with that statement. We didn't get the tower this last time because... Because we wanted all sushi and the tower came with... I don't know, it was only $10 more. We should have just done that. Well, what it was was you weren't getting nearly as much sushi. It's sushi. true. At the time, I think it was... Um, Yeah, because I think they we also they talked. We asked to our we asked our waiter what he thought about it, and he suggested that we go with the platter versus the tower. Yeah, because you gotta they take a lot of the sushi away to give you a whole chilled lobster, oyster, oysters on the half shell, and shrimp. So, and I think we were like, meh, shrimp, and eh, like I love lobster, but but we could get lobster back home. Yeah. I on a rate I on a regular basis I see people on the internet asking where's the best place to get lobster in Disney World. And there's answers to that question. One of them I believe is Narcoosis, if I'm remembering properly. But that my, lobster was amazing yeah. in the um Benedict that we got. Oh yeah. But I know they do a steamed steamed lobster as well. If you want lobster on your vacation it's best to go somewhere that's known for lobster because you're going to, first of all... Like a seafood restaurant. Yes. But first Not of all... that this isn't a seafood yeah. restaurant, but you know what I mean. But say go to New England or Maritime Canada because you're going to get a very fresh lobster 
and it's going to be much more reasonably priced than if you get one in Orlando or Las Vegas or Chicago. Coming from a lobster fishing family, get your lobster in New England or Maritime Canada is my general recommendation. I agree. Not to say you can't get lobster anywhere else, but if you're going somewhere specifically for lobster, that's where you want to go. So the towers, yes, that are we've been a- talking about <laughs> that we've been talking about this whole time are a sushi and sashimi pagoda, which serves two to three people. It is a chilled whole lobster, oysters on the half shell, shrimp cocktail, five piece nigiri, ten piece sashimi, and one roll. And then the sushi and sashimi tower that serves four to six people is a chilled whole lobster, Alaskan king crab, oyster shrimp cocktail, sorry, oysters, shrimp cocktail, nine pieces of nigiri, and 14 pieces of sashimi. Now, this I feel like I would like better, but it's also double the price. Yes. And I think that was the thing. Like, why couldn't we get king crab legs for the other one? Exactly. Also, probably not worth... (laughs) Is the lobster given... It's chilled whole lobster, but do they put it whole or do they like cut it up a bit? I think it's probably whole tail, Mm -hmm. claws, rest of the claw meat. Okay, that makes sense. Because as we all know, or sorry, as Julie and I know, unless you grew up knowing how to pull apart a lobster or break down a lobster, you might not know how to break down a lobster. My boyfriend, in fact, I had to show him how to properly remove the tail meat from the tail a couple weeks ago, and he grew up basically where I grew up, so... (laughs) Um, Yeah, it looks like tail, and then a little... uh, Actually, inside, uh, like, lemon skin, the rest of the meat. Okay, yeah, that's smart. That's smart. Not lemon skin, you know what I mean. Someday we'll have to, like, steam lobsters and then just do a video of us showing people techniques oh, to how to pull a lobster apart this one but yeah so if you have several people the tower might be a great option yeah because i feel like if you're splitting that between four people it's not that expensive no but who is gonna get the lobster my oh. mother if my mother's there this is a tower at morimoto that has the top that we had look it's the lobster is shelled in all of these the lobster is shelled yes so next up is small plates and we have edamame with sea salt Kanakama ragoon, crab meat, and cream cheese spring roll with an apricot sweet chili sauce. And did we crab get that? Is spelled K, so we probably did not. That seems unusual if, that it they have something with crab with a K. I kind of almost feel I feel like that might be one of Disney's spelling errors, but could be wrong. Uh, no, I mean most crab ragoons are not. That's fresh, true. Most crab, crab ragoons aren't fresh crab. They have chicken wings with a spicy garlic soy sauce. Portobello mushroom fries. Those sound amazing. Yes, they do. With mentaiko mayo. Mm -hmm. Hamachi tartare. Which is served with dashi soy, crispy shallots, chive, and wasabi. So hamachi, of course, being a a fish. Yes. And then a toro tatari. Mm, Toro is, is tuna. Toro is amazing tuna. Yes. Toro is really fatty, delicious. Mm, I've never had fatty tuna. Every single time I have tried to order fatty tuna, they're like, oh, we're out. And I'm like, do you ever have it? So there's a place in Boston called Basho Mm -hmm. that had this torched toro roll. And it was Mm. literally one single teeny tiny for seven dollars and it was the most amazing thing i've ever put in my mouth oh yeah one time i ordered one and then ordered a second one and he made it double the size for me the second time because he knew how much i loved it mm-hmm. how did you do that uh it cra- it's the it's a plastic I case understand. i don't know it just was missing one day <laughs> uh crispy popcorn shrimp tempura signature tempura shrimp with a spicy go chat uh, and you try to say that gokujang gokujang aioli and then shishito peppers, which were flash fried with yuzo sea salt and wasabi creme fraiche. Mm, those sound amazing too. Mm-hmm. Dim sum is up next. If you are not familiar with dim sum, it is essentially a meal of Chinese appetizers. Generally steamed. Yes. There's steam, there's fry, but a lot of them come steamed. Pork dumplings, which is a pork dumpling with Napa salad. 
Napa cabbage and scallion. Kung Pao chicken dumplings, which have chicken, peanuts, and peppers. Cilantro shrimp dumplings with shrimp, cilantro, and ginger. Xiao Mai, which is a very traditional dim sum. It's like one of the mains of dim sum, which is. is pork, shrimp, and mushroom. And so delicious. Oh, they really are. And there are really actually so many different Xiao Mai's, but either way, it's oh, it's just so super tasty. Pork egg roll, which is pork cabbage with an apricot sweet chili sauce. Yum. How would you say that? Kakuni. Kakuni pork bao. Two pieces. Now, pork bao are also a fairly main staple of dim sum. It is a bright white steamed bun that is filled with this braised pork belly. Usually the sauce inside has a red color to it. It's just so flavorful. It is my favorite thing. When I go for dim sum, I tell everyone I'm with, look for the pork buns, look for the pork buns. I'm not... In a traditional dim sum restaurant, they come to you with little carts and you point at what you want and they stamp it on your on your card at your table. Also, Basho had really yummy mm, pork bao. Yes. And a lot of the pork bows are very popular, so a lot of times they will come out on the carts and be almost instantaneously gone. So I'm always, especially if it's busy, on the look for por- lookout for pork bow because I will just take my piece of paper and walk over and be like, give me some pork bow. <laughs> and they're like, huh? And I'm just like, that? And they say, okay, and they give it to me and stamp my card. They also have chicken bow, which similar. is similar with a ch- teriyaki chicken, lettuce, spicy mayo. I am sure the chicken bow is delicious. Yep. If you don't can pork. only have one. And don't have anything against pork. Get the pork. But if you don't like pork, or you can get both, or you just really like chicken, try it. That's fine. Try it. But if you I'm can curious only... to see how yeah. it is. I'm sure the chicken is really tender. I'm oh, sure I'm sure it's delicious. But if I had to pick between the two, I would definitely be picking pork bao. The bao is also the cheeseburger pods that they have I at Satuli Canteen. Those are what they are. They're, they are bao. Um, these are, the buns on these should be a little fluffier, lighter, tender. And they're more, it's almost more of like a sandwich the way the, the bun is on these. It's more of Well, it, it really depends on exactly who's making them because I've seen them completely enclosed or those like half fold over ones. I'm not sure which ones these are. But they're half folded over. Okay, they're the half folded over ones. I just googled it. Yeah, but the bun is going to be a lot springier than say the ones on the cheeseburger pods that you can get at Satuli Canteen. Sorry, I also had to burp. I have to burp too. So, like pretty much every restaurant, they also have some soups and salads. We've got miso soup, which is a miso broth with silken tofu, mm. egg. Usually the miso soup has some seaweed in it, too. Yes, yeah. Hot and sour soup, egg tofu with vegetables and a spicy broth. I'm curious to try this one because yes. I love hot and sour soup some places and I hate hot and sour soup some places. Yeah, it can be distinctly different depending on where you get it. Mm-hmm. Ooh, they have a poke salad. Yeah. Tuna salmon. Hamachi, chopped lettuce, cucumbers, apples, pears, and soy onion dressing. That actually mm-hmm. sounds super delicious. They have a house green salad. What place doesn't have one? This one comes with mixed lettuce, Ooh. cherry tomato, red onion, and a morimoto yuzo vinaigrette. That, that sounds super delicious. tasty. And chicken lettuce wraps. Chicken, chicken water, water chestnuts, chestnuts shiitake, shiitake mushrooms. mushrooms. I have a feeling a little bit something like a teriyaki type sauce or a yakitori sock sauce. I bet it's, I wonder if it's similar to what they have at, dare I say, P.F. Chang. Maybe. I'm I'm not actually certain if P.F. Chang's created the lettuce chicken wrap or if it was based off of an actual Chinese dish. I feel like the filling was, but... Yeah, I feel like the filling was, and then they were like, let's make this healthy. I, I in no way claim to be a an authority on Chinese cooking and cuisine, but 
I really like it, and I've done a lot of research, and I don't see a lot of lettuce wraps. <laughs> nope. So they have meat and poultry. So it's seeming like lunch and dinner are pretty much the same. Because yes. Amy and I are both reading off different menus, and they're the exact same thing. Mm-hmm. So we have orange chicken, which is tempura chicken, Chinese broccoli, wok tossed with a sweet Florida orange sauce. Sounds tasty. So kind of your typical orange chicken, but probably much better than what you'd get at, like, the mall. Yes. I would like to know it to see, try it to compare it to Mandarin Redding. Ooh, yeah. That's pretty good orange chicken. Yeah. So we all can agree orange chicken is in no way a traditional dish. The, like, the, the fried chicken bits, I don't know if they're traditional, but fried chicken in Asia is very popular. And I'm sure somebody put an orange sauce there at some point, but orange chicken is not a traditional dish. However, the Chinese food restaurant down the street from my parents' house serves... As far as I'm concerned, and as far as most people who've tried it is concerned, the best orange chicken ever. It has, you know, a nice orange flavor to it, and it also has, like, ginger in there, and it's spicy. It's a good good amount of spicy on it. In fact, they have little spicy peppers in there that you have to pay attention to, or else you bite into and start to chew and then freak out because now you've been chewing a spicy dried pepper. That happened to one of my friends. <laughs> now I'm looking. Is that the orange chicken we're looking at now? Yep. I just pulled up on Amy's computer and my computer while I was talking. Can we just talk about how impressive that was that I did that? Yeah, you did. Um, and this is the orange chicken at Morimoto. So it yes. seems like it's served with some really yummy looking steamed vegetables. It looks more of like chicken finger chicken versus chicken nubs. Yes. So my understanding from a lot of... Floridians or non-native Floridians. That uh, Floridian Chinese food, not so good. Yeah. Chinese food in Florida is not the best. So it's possible that certain alterations, like for example, they look like they're chicken fingers rather than chunks of chicken and every orange chicken or general Gao's chicken recipe I've ever seen chunks is of chunks of chicken. So... Some of what are considered the more everyday Chinese food, Americanized Chinese food, it may not like they tried be. To give a yeah, flair to it. To yeah, make it less. may not be what you're used to, but honestly, here it's probably going to be very delicious, no matter what. Yes. So be prepared for it not to be what you're used to, basically, but be prepared for it to be delicious. So we need to try this next one: okay. the angry chicken, crispy half chicken, bell peppers, bamboo. Green beans, Japanese eggplant, and Thai red curry sauce. I want to know why it's angry. Julie, edit this next part out. I was going to ask, are we beating it with the bamboo? Is that why it's angry? (laughs) (laughs) I kind of leave that in. So, grilled pepper steak is next, Mm -hmm. which is served with potato wedges, asparagus, caramelized onions, and pepper, which is absolutely asian with those potato wedges and then we also have morimoto spare ribs which is a half rack of pork ribs cilantro hoisin sweet chili glaze yum and that is what there is for lunch and i guess there are some other things available at dinner there's one more thing that's available at lunch and dinner but we're gonna go over that last yes they also have mongolian filet mignon with wok sauteed scallions enoki mushrooms Sweet Szechuan sauce, poured table side. Sorry, what was that one called again? Mongolian filet mignon. They have Japanese A5 Ooh. Wagyu... <gasps> Ooh, what do we got? Sorry, I'll send you a picture. Okay. Japanese A5 Wagyu beef, sold per ounce, three ounce minimum. Prepared table... Well, it says it's $24 a serving. I have a feeling that's $24 an ounce. But it's prepared table side over ish- ishaki? Ishiyaki grilled grilling stone with sencho peppercorn sauce. A5 is the highest quality given only to the finest certified beef from Japan. That's probably what we had at... I think ours uh... was even fancier, actually. How could it be fancier than the highest grade Wagyu beef in Japan? I don't know. Oh, Let's yeah. That, no, is that the, the 
fillet. Fillet. Oh yeah, that looks that looks amazing. Let's see. So the fillet is sliced and served over the sautéed vegetables. It just looks phenomenal. Excellent, excellent. And they, for some reason, listed Mongolian filet mignon twice. So, the final item on our meat and poultry is the Morimoto Peking Duck. So, it's 4-2. If one person orders it, you have to order the two servings. Yes. And pay for two people. Worth it. Even if it's just you alone. Worth it. You'll have worth so it. much leftovers, and it'll just be amazing, and it's so good the next day, too, because we did it. So it's carved house-roasted whole duck served with steamed flour pancakes, apricot sweet chili, hoisin miso, and choice of steamed white or brown rice. Now, you may have had Peking or Beijing duck. It's the same thing. They switch the name up sometimes. At a Chinese restaurant local to your home. It's not the same. It's not the same. Not at all. Nope. It's nope, very nope, 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 good. Nope. It's very good. Nothing like this. But it's not nearly the same. This is amazing. It's the most magical thing yes. you will ever put in your mouth ever, 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 ever. Yes. So this experience was so incredible too. Oh, it really, really was. So, so Amy is going to go <laughs> over a little bit about how Peking Duck came to be and how it's created and all that fun stuff. And then I am going to tell you the story about our Peking Duck experience. Mm -hmm. So, they have been roasting duck in China since the Southern and Northern Dynasties. Variations of roast duck have, were prepared for the Emperor of China in the Yan Dynasty. The or dish, originally named Xiao Yazi, was mentioned in the Complete Recipes for Dishes and Beverages Manual, in 1330, by Hu Xiu. Who? Hu? Oh, that's that's nice. That's nice, really. Hu Xiu. And he was an. Sorry, so I don't know if you heard me because I was a little bit far away from my microphone. But Amy said his name was Hu Xiu, and I said, "Who?" And then she went to repeat his name again because she didn't get the joke. <laughs> So, <laughs> he was an inspector of the Imperial Kitchen. Inspector Gadget. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Now, the Peking roast duck that to be that we know today, or essentially we know today, was fully developed. So, to what we know, during the Ming later Ming Dynasty. And by then, Peking duck was one of the main dishes on the import, import, imperial court menu. Now, the first restaurant specializing in Peking duck was established in Beijing in 1416. That's some old duck. Yes. Also, can we call these fun facts... Fun with facts. Yes, we can. Yes, this is fun with facts. By the Qianlong period of the Qing Dynasty, so we're talking 1736 to 1796, the popularity of the Peking duck had spread to the upper classes, so not just like the emperor, but to the upper classes, and is really cementing itself in Chinese cuisine. By the mid-20th century, Peking duck had become a national symbol of China, and tourists and diplomats were very fond of it. Henry Kissinger, the Secretary of State of the United <laughs> States, was actually a big fan when he, during his first secret visit to China, they served it to him and he just absolutely loved it. Peking duck was also a favorite dish of Cuban, former Cuban leader Fidel Castro. Huh, interesting. Yes, very interesting. Very interesting. So you often will hear it referred to as Beijing duck because the region of Peking is also Beijing now and it just depends on who's selling it really. So the preparation of the duck. This is this is more where it gets imp important. Um, the current duck that is used for Peking duck is the Pekin. So not Peking, but Pekin duck. And... 
the fattened ducks are rinsed thoroughly with water, and air is pumped under the skin through the neck cavity to separate the skin from the fat layer. Now, this is once the duck is dead. Oh, yes. This is sorry. not a living duck. No, this no, is yes. Once I'm sorry. the duck has been prepped for cooking. Yes. Sorry, sorry. I, I thank you, Julie. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. The, they then, um, the duck is then soaked in boiling water for a very short time and then it's hung to dry. So if you ever go to, you know, if you ever see in, in Chinese restaurants in the windows or whatnot, a duck hanging up, that's Peking duck. It shows you, hey, look, it's a duck. It's really a duck. While it is being hung, they glaze it with a layer of syrup and they rinse the inside again. And then it has to stand for at least 24 hours. It is then roasted in an oven until it turns shiny and brown. Now, basically what all this is doing is it is creating an environment where the skin can get very crispy and delicious. And the fat can render. When fat renders, it also gets a little crispy and delicious. We, we all know what bacon's like. So they're, they do all this for the delicious, delicious skin and the delicious, you know, moist meat. Mm. When you get, when you're served Peking duck in the United States and at Mori, Morimoto, Asia, it's generally served to you with the skin and the meat together. In China, they generally serve you the skin first with a dipping sauce and eat the delicious crispy skin. Think about like at Thanksgiving when no one's looking and you eat you, all of the skin. Off you the you like pick a little crunchy skin bit and off then, of the whoops, turkey. It's all gone. Yeah, exactly. That happens to me because I eat it all. Yeah, so they give you the skin. You're eating it. You and your friends are eating it with a little bit of dip as they're cutting and prepping the rest of the duck for you. So I will turn it over to Julie to talk about our partic... Oh, wait, actually, sorry. I'm not going to turn it over to Julie. It's cool. I don't want to talk anyway. We're not... I'm not done yet. I forgot, like, a very important part. So the meat is served with steamed pancakes and spring onions and a sweet bean sauce or hassan sauce sometimes. Sometimes they put some little pickled vegetables as well, and you wrap all that deliciousness up in, in the Chinese pancake, and you eat it and you're a happier person. Mm. Now, Julie, over to Julie now for our particular Peking duck experience. So once upon a time, Amy and I went to Morimoto, Asia for my birthday celebration. It was our first night of our November trip two years ago in 2016, and earlier that day, I had received a mm hops bottle autographed by Hanson. Yeah, I'm going to fit that into every story I possibly can. She cried. Yeah, the cast member took a picture of me because she was so happy that she made me so happy. It was amazing. And Amy was like, no, 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 she's really crying. And I was like, yeah, 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 these are real tears. I'm that excited. <laughs> anyway, fast forward to the end of the evening. And Amy and I went to Disney Springs for my birthday dinner. And we decided to do Morimoto Asia. And we were kind of on the fence about the Peking duck. We weren't really sure if we were going to get it. It was something we talked about we wanted. But price point, it was a little bit more than we were anticipating. We initially went to Morimoto Asia for the, the sushi, sushi platter, platter that we, talked, we yep. were telling you about. So we already were planning on spending a significant amount of money on that. However, we were sat right next to the kitchen. And we were literally sat at the table that was in line with these beautiful hanging Peking duck. So we were just tempted and tempted and tempted. And then our waiter tells us that it's cut for us. Like we pick which duck we want. And it's literally cut for us in front of us. And we can see it through the, the glass kitchen. Yes. So... Being culinary students, you know, we get excited and we really want to do this. And we kind of hint that it would be really cool if we could be behind the glass to get closer to get a better video. But our waiter mentions that the only time anybody has ever gone behind the glass was when Morimoto himself was there giving someone a tour. Yes. So we were probably not getting behind the camera, but I mean behind the glass. But we hinted that, you know, 
that would be super cool. So our waiter walks away and tells them, hey, you know, this is the duck they want, yada, yada, yada. And we're like, hey, so this is all we want. Make sure that, like, our duck is in that front glass so when we're taking the video, it looks like he's pulling it from there, even if our duck came from the back and those are just display ducks. Like, totally fine. We just want to see our duck come down from there and then take a video of it and see the final product. So he walks away and, you know, it's, again, my birthday dinner. And he comes back and he goes, come with me. Get your camera ready. So Amy and I get up and I get my camera ready and he takes us behind the glass. So we don't have the glass in the way. We're literally right next to the hanging peeking ducks. We are right by the chef and the chef pulls it down. And you can tell the chef is definitely showing off for us. And he takes the peeking duck down. And the way he slices it and cuts it is just so fancy and such showmanship and beautifully done and so quickly. It's just, it was so impressive and blew us away. And then he plated the whole thing and then presented it to us and we have it on the table. And it was just like such an incredible experience that like, I just can't even believe that it happened. And then afterwards, the chef who did it came up to me and was like, hey, can you send me this video? And I was like, yeah, absolutely. So, you know, I exchanged numbers with him and sent him the video of him cutting up the duck because obviously he wanted that to share. And it was just such an incredible experience. Talk about Disney magic. And like for my whole birthday day, it just was incredible. So if you are really into food and you go to some of the higher end or more lack of a better term the signature restaurants foodie restaurants Mm -hmm. and you express how into food you are not to be like hey i'm super into food but if you're just as excited about food as the people cooking it are little bits of magic like that tend to happen so never feel bad about gushing about how excited you are about something don't expect anything obviously other than your delicious meal but don't be afraid to be really excited. This Peking duck, as we, I believe, already said, was the most delicious, tender, moist, crispy, the skin of course, I'm talking crispy, Peking duck I have ever had. It was incredible. And the sauces complemented. They did mm. not overpower it. Yes. So you still got all of the delicious duck flavor through that. Ugh, it was just so phenomenal. Yes. This is definitely something that we will someday go back and do again. Because it is amazing. And we highly recommend it to anybody. Anybody who's remotely interested in it. Just just do it. Just do it. It's incredible. It's so delicious. And we had some left over. And the next morning we had it for breakfast. Didn't even have to warm it up. Mm-hmm. It was still just as incredible. And it yes. was oh, just such a wonderful treat. So, like a reminder yes. the next morning. So amazing. So that was also happy. the day that they deleted our, deleted our pizza. <laughs> <laughs> they threw away our pizza. After we get our Peking duck, I look over to the left. And I swear that Zach Hansen is sitting at the table next to us. Now, I knew this wasn't the case because he didn't really look like Zach Hansen. But he kind of like had similar features and like... He looked... A lot, a lot like. like Zach Hansen. I actually, because Julie's like, oh my god, it looks like Zach Hansen. And I'm like, hold on, because I'm, Zach Hansen was my favorite Hansen back in the sixth grade. So I noticed that, and I was like, I want to know what he looks like right now. So I pulled it up. And I googled his wife, because yes. he was sitting with a woman, and his wife happened to be super pregnant at the time, and the woman sitting at the table was not super yes. pregnant, so we knew that clearly... It wasn't Zach Hansen. But, but he could have been. He could have been Zach Hansen. He could and have I, been. Like, geeked out super hard for 30 seconds. All right. So, the next thing on the menu is the noodles and rice. Singapore laka, laksa noodle. Ooh, this sounds so delicious. Oh, my gosh. Creamy coconut and spicy curry broth. Also, mm-hmm. rice noodles, chicken meatball, soy marinated egg. Yum. Oh, so tasty. Spicy Char siu pork ramen also sounds delicious. Soy flavored broth, egg noodles, roasted pork, soy marinated egg, and scallions. They have duck ramen, which sounds just amazing. A, I keep saying everything sounds amazing because, because it, really it does. does. 
Peking duck broth, egg noodles, duck meat, scallion, soy marinated egg, and cilantro. 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 Oh, the duck ramen does not exist at lunch. That's it. Tonka suto ramen. Ramen. Rich, <laughs> rich pork broth, egg noodles, roasted pork, soy marinated egg, woodier, woodier mushroom, pickled ginger. Now, before, So that also exists at lunch, yes. too. Before I continue with the rest of these noodles and ramen, this is not your instant ramen, your top ramen. This is not your crunchy package of ramen that you boil with powdered stuff and water. So if that's the only ramen you are familiar with, this is definitely different. Different in the best possible way. Yes, this is not a packet of ramen. This is not cup noodles. This is heaven. Heaven, yes. Thank you, Julie. (laughs) So in Western cuisine, Western manners for eating and meals and dining, all the food is brought to the table at the same time, or if by chance it is not, not everyone's entrees are brought together, it is polite to wait until everyone at the table has received their entree to start eating. That is not the case with ramen. You go to a ramen shop, if there's more than one of you at the table, they're going to bring out your ramen for each person as it is, as it is created, as it is available, as it is ready. And when it is put in front of you, you will now start eating the ramen, slurping those noodles... It aerates them. So I just set up a side-by-side in one of my photo apps that I have on my phone just to show you guys how similarly this person looked to Zach Hansen. And I had to, like, show them to Amy, and I had to be like, Amy, this really wasn't Zach Hansen, right? Because they still look so similar. If I didn't know better, to this day, I would say that that could have been Zach Hansen. I know it wasn't. It doesn't matter if your friend doesn't have their dish yet or if everyone at your table doesn't have your dish yet it is entirely polite and accepted to start eating your ramen the moment it is served the reason is as the noodles sit in the broth if you let them sit too long they're going to start to soak up too much of it and get soggy and you don't want that nobody wants a soggy noodle nobody wants soggy noodles (laughs) In fact, a lot of ramen places will actually, you can order a second side of noodles to then put into your remaining ramen broth and have some more noodles. When you're done with your noodles, then you drink the broth and all the other delicious bits of things that they put in your ramen because it's tasty. Now, I'm not going to actually tell you how to eat your ramen, how I recommend it is a good suggestion, but... Just sort we know of, how to eat our ramen. Yeah. We're just sort of trying to explain to you that there's a grand, massive, huge difference between a packet of ramen and the ramen and other noodles we we're talking about here. Garlic miso vegetable ramen. Shiitake mushroom broth, bok choy, bamboo, sesame, and cilantro. That actually sounds really tasty. It really does. I mean, ow. I'm sure any ramen would be super delicious. Oh, yeah. Did you already say the tonkosu? Yes. Seafood crispy Shanghai noodles, which has jumbo shrimp, scallop, calamari, seasonal greens, garlic, and shiodare sauce. sauce. That sounds amazing. Also, Amy can't try it Mm because death. Beef lo mein noodles, stir fried noodles, napa cabbage, carrot, bean sprout, mushroom, scallion. Yum. That's kind of your basic, like. Yeah. Morimoto chicken fried rice, egg, bell peppers, bean sprout, scallion, spicy house. Sambal sauce. That's not available at lunch. Morimoto gamoku fried rice. Duck chicken pork shrimp vegetables. Spicy house. Sambal, sambal sauce. sauce. Yeah. It sounds like that the sounds world's really best house fried rice ever. Oh my god, with duck? Are you kidding me? Yeah. Wow. So what we're referring to if you don't eat Chinese food a lot is a lot of times you'll go someplace and they'll have pork fried rice and chicken fried rice and Beef fried, fried rice, rice and vegetable fried rice. Sure. And then they have house fried rice, which, which is, is just like a all mixture of, the of all of it. And meat that they have mixed into a fried rice. Yes. So that's what that sounds like. The best, you know, house fried rice ever. Morimoto Buribop. Korean style yellowtail rice bowl served in a hot clay pot finished with egg yolk prepared table side. See, I always thought it was bu- bimbi map. Bimbi mop. That's what I thought it was called. Bimbi bimbi mop. Bimbi bop. Bimbi bop. Bimbibop. But buribop works too. It might be a slightly different version of it. That is only available at dinner. Next section is the fish. Nope, Sorry. I have a lunch set. 
Oh, excellent. So there is a choice of miso soup or house salad, mm-hmm. choice of orange chicken, vegetable, tofu, or red miso glazed salmon, choice of California roll or white rice, and accompanied by dumplings and pickles and seasonal vegetables. That's not a bad little uh, grouping of stuff for lunch. No, no, it's not. Seems like a good variety of different things. Good variety. All right, fish. I only have spicy stir-fried jumbo shrimp for lunch. Tell me about it. Jumbo shrimp with Szechuan chili sauce, vegetable fried rice, and poached farm egg. Mm. For dinner, they have a red miso glazed Faro Island salmon with wilted bok choy, Shaanxi gastrique, Grilled rice cake, Morimoto dashi broth. Dashi is like dashi stock. It's it's just a type of type of soup base. It's very tasty, very basic. Like like you'd think of it as like a basic chicken stock, but there's a lot more depth of flavor. Sake steamed Florida snapper, yuzu soy, scallion, spinach, and hot sesame oil. Next up, vegetables. I have Szechuan eggplant, Tijuana chili. Toasted garlic sesame panko. That's it? Yep. All right. Wok, <laughs> wok sautéed Chinese vegetables, seasonal greens and garlic, steamed vegetables, which is assorted steamed vegetables, tofu, ponzu sauce. Mm, yeah. And then Do does... you have the uh, sushi pizza anywhere? No, I think they got rid of it. I can't imagine why. You should talk about it. So once upon a time, Amy and I decided a sushi pizza would be good. And I don't know if it was actually called a sushi pizza or like a tuna sashimi pizza or something. I don't know. So a lot of our fans are actually going to be in Disney at the same time as us. We actually got a message from... That's crazy and wonderful. I know. We got a message from Jamie McGuire, and she's doing her, like, five generations trip. Oh! And our first night is their last night before they leave. Oh! And I asked what they're doing, and they said they don't have plans yet. So oh. perhaps we'll have to meet up with them at Trader Sam. Yeah. Just saying. So we got this. I want to call it a taco pizza, but it's not because we were at the sushi restaurant. So it was basically like a tuna sushi pizza. And now this wasn't horrible. No, but it wasn't, it wasn't awful what I was expecting. So bef- in the past, I've had a sushi pizza that's made on like a scallion pancake. Mm, that's actually yes. super delicious. But this was more on like a tortilla that had been toasted. And then it had, like, very thinly sliced tuna on it. Like, it looks beautiful. And it had, I believe it had some olives on it. I think that's what threw me off about it. Um, But some cilantro and some other microgreens, some tomato. I don't know. Some weird stuff on it. I think that's some onion. I think if it had just been tuna, spicy mayo, some greens. But they added, literally, there's olive, tomato, and onion on this. Which was kind of like, I think that was, like, a little much. And, like, some... Pickled jalapenos. There was all sorts of stuff on this. And it wasn't awful. The flavors just weren't... They didn't meld together so well. And I was expecting it to be on a scallion pancake. And that would have been so much better. Like, it was beautifully presented. Oh, it definitely was. With everything else that we had that night... It was the low point because everything else was was such a high point. It was so incredible. And it... I mean, it made for some pretty... Yeah, it was a beautiful, beautiful presentation. Pretty pictures, because we have a picture of it with the Peking duck behind it, and that was just phenomenal. So, but it's no longer on the menu, so you can't Mm -hmm. try it. So next is dessert. M.M. Parfait is a dessert for two. Chocolate cream puff, vanilla gelato, hazelnut chocolate crunchies, and sesame mochi. Mm. Do we think that M.M. stands for Morimoto? Or Masaharu, Masaharu, what's it? Masaharu Morimoto, or Mickey Mouse. They share initials. Or Mochi Mochi, because that's another dessert. That's true. Churro fondue. Ooh, yum. Homemade churros, Nutella, vanilla cream. Mm, Yum. They have churro fondue at Max Brenner's. That's where I got waffle sandwich that I was like, hey, when you can't be in Disney, find a waffle sandwich somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Chocolate cream and crunch, Oreo tempura, mandarin orange jelly, dark chocolate gelato. Hazelnut chocolate crunchies. So I really want to try Oreo? that. Is that I d- a deep fried I Oreo? D- a little, possibly. I think, it is. I think it is. Possibly. Mandarin orange jelly. Yum. Dark yeah. chocolate gelato. Oh. Drool. And mochi mochi. Mochi mochi. Anan tofu. You just didn't want to pronounce that. Coconut mango soup. Fruit boba. Frozen mango. And lemon yogurt powder. I really want to try that one. Yep. That sounds amazing. Especially for the coconut mango soup. Yes. Cream caramel. 
Yuzi caramel sauce, black sesame whipped cream. Oh, what? That sounds so that and sounds black amazing. sesame air cake. Okay, I want that too. Yeah. Today I chef- can't believe we didn't get dessert there. Oh, yeah. I'll tell you a story about how we almost got dessert. Yeah. So today's chef's choice, gelato trio. Now, I was reading it earlier and I read it as gelatin trio and got really excited because Japan and China does a lot of fun things with gelatin. gelatin. Mm-hmm. And, I bet they would probably have fancy gelato. And then I too. realized that it was gelato trio and I was like, just oh. Italian. But gelato is delicious. And they also have today's chef's choice sorbeto trio. Sorbeto? Sorbeto trio. Which is like the gelato version of sorbet. Also Italian. So tell so, us about dessert before we move on to the children's menu. The waiter was super awesome. That's right. I remember now. Guess what? We also don't remember his name. We're going to start writing things down and taking pictures. A, I started bullet journaling and I have in my brain planned out... A whole spread of our trip, or it's like a few pages, for November, where we can write down all that we had to eat at all the places, and details about everything we had, and how they taste, and our waiters, and things like that. So, I have a plan, and Amy's going to make a plan, too. I'm going to make a plan. Because I said so, she has to. So, he tried to get me a really awesome dessert, which was basically just something special for my birthday, and we took too long to eat because we were just enjoying everything so much that it was too late and the sushi bar closed but what he tried to do was get me a rose made out of tuna tuna that would be amazing and it almost succeeded and i just appreciate all his efforts and he was amazing and wonderful and i'm just grateful that we had such an incredible experience but that would have been amazing so they do have kids meals which include a dessert which is pretty cool and these are the morimoto macaroni and cheese yellow and white cheddar the mini ramen which is soy broth egg noodles sesame and you can add pork or chicken lo mein Which is Cantonese noodles tossed in a lo mein sauce served with broccoli and carrots. You can add shrimp, chicken, or beef to that one. Mm -hmm. The Bao Wow. That's so cute. Beef hot dogs, soft steamed bun, cucumber, tonkatsu sauce served with white or brown rice. I need to Google what a Bao Wow is because that's just so cute. Like So like a Bao Bun like we were talking about before. But wow, because it's a hot dog. Apparently no one has ever ordered a Bao Wow. Or bothered to take a photo of it. I kind of just want to order a Bao Wow. Yeah, just to find out. I'm curious. It's not that expensive. And then there is the orange chicken, which is crispy white meat tenders, orange sauce served with white or brown rice. So this seems more of the traditional orange chicken that you're used to. Yes. And the kids' meals include one dessert, and the desserts are fondue churros with Nutella, or ice cream, or sorbets, sorbets, Uh sorry, of assorted flavors. The non-alcoholic drinks actually sound really amazing. There is a Blushing Dragon, which is Calpico, Ruby Red Grapefruit, and Lychee Juice. A Lychee Lemon Soda, which, why didn't we get this? Because that sounds amazing. Fresh Mint Leaves, Lemon Juice, and Lychee Puree and Soda. A Mango Go-Go, which is a tropical mix of Q Ginger Beer and Mango. They have soda. They have Iced Organic Green Tea or Black Tea. They have Thai Tea. They have House Made Lemonade and Vietnamese Iced Coffee. And their cocktails seem pretty intriguing as well. They have a Morimotini, which is AO Japanese vodka and Morimoto Junmai Sake. A Shirayuri, White Lily, which is Sudachi Shochu Kalpiko and Yuzo served with a twist. Mango Matcha Punch, which is Kettle One Vodka, Green Tea, and Lychee. That sounds amazing. A Manhattan East, which is Maker's Mark and Canton Ginger Liqueur paired with Jumai Sake. A Sparkling Belvedere, which is Belvedere Vodka, with accents of Yuzo and Cranberry topped with Moet Sparkling Rosé. Moet and Chandan, I always have to say it together to figure out how to pronounce it. Dim Sum Bloody Mary. What? Why did we not have this? Asian has an egg roll garnish. Can you let me finish? I'm sorry, I got really excited. It is our Asian expired... Asian-inspired Bloody Mary with Hanger One Vodka, a touch of wasabi, and an egg roll garnish. Egg roll garnish! Yeah, amazing. I want to use O'Collins, though. Hendrix Gin, which is my favorite gin, and Yuzu combined for a new take on this classic cocktail. A Japanese Old Fashioned, which is this classic cocktail, uses Suntory Toki Whiskey with a hint of orange. Mm-hmm. Then they have some sort of wine that I can't pronounce, even though I can pronounce all the Japanese words. Lorenz und Sophie 
Kulnia yeah. Vietlinar, Austria. Yeah. Which is very interesting that it's so French sounding when it's from Austria. I was going to say, it sounded very German to me. (laughs) Or Austrian. Not the way you pronounced it. A, but with a ny on top of the u. Yes. I don't know what it's actually called. Um, A lychee martini with absolute elix and Soho lychee liqueur. A kunse smoked coconut. Mm. A sweet and nutty blend of Maestro Dobel Umito smoked tequila, Bacardi coconut, and Jaffard Orgat. Orgat. The Fortunate Monkey. I want this one. And my screen just went down. A refreshing blend of monkey shoulder scotch, coconut, and green tea with a splash of pineapple. Mm -hmm. And then sake sangria. Sake, light white wine, plum wine, Asian pears, apple, plum, and tangerine juice. Mm -hmm. Sounds amazing. And you can get a carafe of that. Mm -hmm. And then there are some wines and some beers. Yes. The beers are a mixture of American beers and Japanese beers. Yep. We recommend this place. It it's was wonderful. so much fun. If you go for lunch, if you go for dinner, if you just get a, if you literally just go for a sushi roll, or you they go for a bowl of ramen, or like no, you they, just make a small meal out of it. So they also have a lounge, so kind of like a bar type area, and they do have you know lighter bites over there. And then they have late night. After a certain point, I think it's like 11, they stop serving their full menu and it's just late night items. I believe there's some appetizer type items and a limited selection of ramen. Also, just click on that. They have some fun stuff. Oh my God, let's talk about it. Hold on. Let's see the lounge. You pull up the lounge and I'll pull up late night because I already have late night pulled up. So pull up the lounge. So, admittedly, I had looked at this before, but haven't looked at it in a while. So, late night has Kushiaka. Grilled on a stick, which is chicken yakitori, mm-hmm. pork skirt steak, and miso marinated black cod. Mm. What? Also available in the lounge. They have beef bulgogi nachos, wonton chips, thinly sliced soy marinated beef short ribs, gochujang sauce, jalapenos, cheese, scallions. Also available in the lounge. Cashew pork quesadilla. Pulled braised pork belly, caramelized red onions, spicy mayo, and blended cheese. Also available in the lounge. Menchi katsu sliders. Chef Morimoto's award-winning fried hamburger sliders. Kimchi mayo, Japanese barbecue sauce, green papaya slaw. Do I have to say it again? Yep. Also available in the lounge. Chicken wings, spicy garlic soy glaze, chili threads, and sesame. Lounge. (laughs) Shichimi Spiced edamame, yum. Sesame and Japanese seven spices. Also in the lounge. Shrimp chip and <laughs> shrimp chips and dip with yuzo guacamole, wasabi cocktail sauce, and spicy mayo. You know what I'm gonna say. Blistered shishito peppers with wasabi creme fresh. Anybody seen that episode of South Park? No, mm-hmm. just me. Cool. Um, and yuzu salt. Kevin also saw that because I said I mentioned creme fresh one time, and he's like, "Have you seen that episode of South fresh. Park?" Also available in the lounge. And now then they, they have noodles. No, sorry, they have sushi rolls. A spicy tuna roll, the California roll, and the shrimp tempura roll. Also available earlier. in the lounge. And then they have some noodles. They have chashu ramen, which we talked about earlier. Mm-hmm. A duck ramen. Did we talk about that earlier? Mm-hmm. And the tonkutsu, tonkutsu, tonkotsu ramen. Also talked about earlier. Also available in the lounge. We got some different drinks in the late night menu, though. We have the Smoked Manhattan, which is Junmai Sake, Maker's Mark Bourbon, Ginger Liqueur, Orange Bitters, and Hickory Smoke. Also available in the lounge. The Bee's Knees, which is Kettle One Vodka, Lavender Honey, Squeezed Fresh Lemon Juice, Mint, and Yuzu Sherbet. You know, I think... Sorry, Sorbet. You know, I think Morimoto Asia is just the The Bee's bee's Knees. Is that also available in the lounge? Also available in the lounge. Forbidden Lounge Highball, Suntory Toki Whiskey, Sparkling Water, and Kiwi. So that one's not available in the lounge because it's forbidden. No, I'm kidding. It's available <laughs> in the lounge. <laughs> I, I had a feeling that you were going to say like that. Oh, I know you so well. Um, Kinjo Cocktail, which is milk tea, silly vanilla vodka, Thai tea, and Bailey's Foam. I, I want that. That sounds amazing. It, it yeah. sounds like the Thai tea that we get. But alcoholic. Mm-hmm. And I love me some Thai tea. Yeah, we need to do this lounge. So, got some beers, got some wines. Not as many as a dinner, but... Nope. 
But yeah, yeah so that's a good place to, to, you know, go at Morimoto's as well. If you don't want to go for a full dinner, or if you're going really late, or if you just want to pop into the lounge and you don't have a reservation, I think that's how that works. If they have openings available, clearly. All right, so that is Morimoto's. We love it. We think you'll love it. It's amazing. It's wonderful. By far one of my favorite places in Disney Springs. It really is. It's yeah. just, I feel like you step in and you're almost like transported into a different world. And it's just... A world with delicious Asian cuisine. Magical. It's so delicious. It's amazing. It's wonderful. Every time I go to Disney Springs and I walk in the general vicinity of Morimoto, Asia, I see it and I go, I want to go there. Yep. Always. And then I'm like, well, we've been there and we should go places that we, we haven't, haven't been yet. Or, we haven't been to the late night dining. That's true. We haven't been to the late night dining. Yeah. All right. So this week's fan favorite food comes from Lauren Turner. I can pronounce that name. So thank you. It I haven't says, heard this one or read this one yet. Yes, you have. I sent it to you. It says, hey, ladies, after your outcry for submissions this week, I felt it was time for me to share my Disney food memory. When I was 17, I went to Disney World for the first time with my best friend Allie and her family. Before this, I had been to Disneyland a few times and had the perception that Disney food was chicken nuggets and churros. However, Allie's mom was a master park planner, especially when it came to dining. We ate at so many incredible restaurants and it really showed me how good Disney food was. My favorite meal was breakfast at Cinderella's Royal Table because I am an absolute sucker for the princesses. The food was also absolutely delicious, and we were given special wishing stars to keep afterward. I keep mine on my desk so I can see it and remember the magic all the time. I love the podcast and can't wait to see what comes next. Best wishes, Lauren. Thank you, Lauren. And then she also sent us some pictures from the time, and she says, the tall blonde and Allie... Oh, I'm the tall blonde, and Allie is in the blue dress. So we will show you these pictures as oh, well, because nice. they're awesome and wonderful, they and are. they came out much better than ours, because mm-hmm. ours was not breakfast, ours was dinner, and the lighting was much dimmer. So I'm very excited about yes. your pictures coming out so perfectly. We also have wishing stars, don't we? We do have wishing yes. stars and wands, because we're yes. extra. Yep. I actually keep my wishing star in my, like, Disney bag. So thank you, Lauren, so much for sharing your Disney food memory. We love them, and the pictures are so adorable. If you haven't shared your Disney food memory with us, please do that now. You can share with us at onelittlespice at gmail.com, or you can share it to the pinned post on Facebook. That's right at the top. You can also send us a direct message on Instagram, Twitter, or a direct message on facebook we are on patreon where we have a lot of awesome exclusives that you can only get if you are a patreon subscriber so we have some magical snack corners and right now we're doing a nine part series on the disney food and wine festival at epcot and it's coming to a close soon and it's just a way for us to share all of our experiences at the food and wine festival and give you some awesome tips and tricks so you can enjoy your time at the festival too we have some other things like a button pack and our newest feature which we are so excited about sharing is our one little spice blend so this is a quarterly spice blend that we are going to be sending out to all of our patrons at the at the ahi tuna nachos level and higher so this is something that we are doing quarterly anybody who signs up for patreon and becomes one of our patrons during the month of october will get our first spice blend no matter what tier you sign up for. And we are so excited about this. It's a really delicious spice blend. I have been cooking with it for the last couple weekends. It is super delicious and we can't wait to share it with you guys. And it's definitely a very fall spice blend, which is perfect. So it'll be fall, wintery. It's just a very warm, lovely spice blend to cook with. And I'm so excited. And Amy is so excited that we're going to be able to share this with you. It's amazing. We are on YouTube, so on YouTube we are a little behind and trying to catch up, but we have had both had very busy summers, and once the winter rolls around, we'll have a lot more time to actually cook more and get these videos out to you, but it is our way of sharing Disney food with you guys so that you can bring some Disney magic into your own kitchen. We have done Le Cellier's Cheddar Cheese Soup, 
and we made it into poutine, which was delicious. We did the seven vegetable terrine from uh, Akershus in Norway. And then we have already recorded, and I promise it'll be out soon, the chopped cob salad from Hollywood Brown Derby. I got to say, this is basically an exact replica of this meal and it was so delicious and wonderful and make sure you subscribe when you get there we are the taste lab so search for that on youtube and subscribe so that when we do get these out they will be you will be the first ones to get them all right and the next one after that will be kona where we are going to make tonga toast and brew some kona coffee it'll be great and we are on Tee Public, so that is where you can get all sorts of merchandise. We have t-shirts, we have bags, we have cell phone cases, we have mugs, we have everything that you could possibly want, one little spice, so that is another way to support us. So that is teepublic.com, and you can either search one little spice or click on the link in the description below. And that is all that we have. Thank you so much for listening, and just remember, every recipe starts with one little spice. Uh, shrimp, chip, and trip. And <laughs> Rory, we're at Slurp and the Noodles. Now I'm just... It's not Zach Hansen. They have different ears. Have you seen a picture of Protozoa lately? No, have you? Yeah, let me show you. And there's a dog. Popper. That is so... Want to be on the podcast? Ruff, ruff, ruff. My name is Obi. I'm an adorable little dog. I will be on your podcast. Bow wow 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 w